I remember being on the kitchen floor while she was talking to the piano teacher and saying, no, I don't want to take piano. I'm going to be such a loser. Well, famously, I started piano because I went to see the movie Titanic, as everybody did in 1995 or whenever it came out. And the James Horner music I was just completely taken with. I was 11 years old. I started learning the music on my own, and my mom thought that was a little unusual, so she called my friend's mom and had me sign up for lessons with her. My grandma, who loves classical music, bought me a bunch of um, piano books, and I didn't really know how to read music, but it's really funny because you can see in the score me trying to figure out what the notes were. But I started learning, um, I think the, the second piece I learned was the Rondo alla Turca by Mozart, and then I was playing Chopin, and this was all very quick. Uh, and then we moved to Maine the following year, and I got a really great teacher up there, and I just, I think by age 13, I had decided I wanted to do music for, for my life. So I have this theory that the minor seventh chord that begins My Heart Will Go On was my gateway drug into music because the next piece that I heard was at a national music teachers convention and I went to watch the competitors. And the piece that struck me the most was Ravel's Umbach sur l'océan, which famously starts with a minor seventh chord. And it was, it, I wrote about this in my college essay and my dad read it and he said, you can't write that, that's so trite. And like, you obviously made that up. But it was actually true that I heard that piece and I thought, oh my god, I have to be able to do this. It was like um, those spaceships with the, they uh, pull you in. I don't know what that called, like, you know what I'm talking about. So I just put on my blinders and I, I was just practicing. It wasn't, it didn't, I didn't understand anything about a career in music or anything like that. I just felt this inc incredibly strong drive to be able to play this, Piece, and then as the more worlds of piano repertoire opened up to me, I, I just thought, oh, I have to be able to play that. So I practiced you know, obsessively and thankfully had parents who were very supportive. When I was younger, I used to get incredibly nervous to play. I remember my knees would shake on the pedal. I could feel them bumping up against the bottom of the keyboard. <laughs> I think I've grown to feel like really happy when I'm nervous now because it, it's going to add something to the performance. If I feel nervous, I, I feel it, I've associated that with a really positive thing. The prompt was to play something that was in response to a great event or traumatic event even. And um, one of the really m incredible things about it is that each movement is dedicated to somebody Ravel knew who died in World War I. And Ravel was an ambulance driver. He was not physically cut out to be in the trenches or on the front lines, but he witnessed so many horrific things by driving that ambulance. And I found watching the movie 1917 really illuminating in playing this Ravel piece because it brings the viewer really up close to um, sort of what that experience of war must have been like. And in the beginning of the movie, there's these two soldiers and they're embarking on this journey to go pass a message. And I couldn't help but um, think about this, like... Which is from the prelude of this set. And I found, like, the two hands, like, each were a character. Each were, like, a soldier, and they're, like, wandering through this 
big landscape. It was it just sort of added a no, new realm of understanding to the piece. And it's been f said that the beginning of the Takata is maybe like, I, I've never liked this analogy, but I think it actually does kind of work, this relentless... Um, is like um, the guns, the machine guns. And when I first heard that, I was thinking about like modern guns. But back then, I think the sound of the bullets may have been something like that. And there's this relentlessness in that movement, but also um, a triumphant quality at the end. And then, of course, in the menuet, I think, is one of the most tender pieces that he wrote and uh, was dedicated to um, the, the son of a, a family that took Ravel in. And I just, I think there's so many elements in this piece that speak to tragedy and, and to horrific experiences and turn it into kind of a beautiful reflection on that.
especially aware now of music's unique ability to transcend the realm of time and that like I can be playing music that was written so long ago and bringing that that immediacy now and also music can warp your sense of time it can speed things up it can slow things down that ability to uh, is maybe not escape is not the right word but ability to manipulate your concept one's conception of time as like a divided it, it's something that can be divided and uh, precisely calculated like seconds and minutes I think music has a way to take us away from that and experience things differently